Okay, in this video I'd like to talk about laser population inversion. As you can see, of course, I fixed the problem I had with the shadow on my videos, so that won't be the case anymore, or we won't have shadows on my videos anymore. So this video leads on from a number of videos. The first one is the laser loss coefficient. That's where I proved the laser loss coefficient, which I'll speak about in a moment. I also proved the Einstein relations and I spoke about those. I'll mention them again in a moment. So it's, it's a good idea, I suppose, to look at those before you look at this video. And perhaps it might be helpful also to look at my video on the um, on how a laser works. Depending on your level of knowledge, that might be helpful. So very quickly, what in those videos I proved the following relationships up here, and I'll just uh, I'll just remind you what they mean. So if I'm talking about a B, that is a spontaneous. Excuse me, I take that back. It is a stimulated transition. So B21 or sorry B21 here is the probability of stimulated transition from level two to level one. B12 is the probability of stimulated emission from or transition from 1 to 2, or energy level 1 to energy level 2. And these G values here are the degeneracies of levels 2 and level 1. And I proved this particular ratio here, and I proved the laser loss coefficient uh, alpha of nu. Just to remind you, I had something along the li lines of that um, I of x is equal to I0 e to the minus alpha x. So this is basically the attenuation of your laser beam inside your fabric pero cavity. So, or the attenuation, meaning the uh, the amount by which your laser beam is uh, is uh, absorbed or lost. All right. So, I, I, like I said, I don't really want to talk about this in that in this particular video. So, uh, what do we do here? Okay. Well, if we look at if we look at our our um, our expression here for the loss coefficient, and I'll just rewrite my equation. I don't know why I got rid of it. So I of x, the irradiance, or the power at uh, position x, is equal to the incident irradiance, or the incident power, times a uh, decaying exponential, e to the negative alpha x. So we would look, we would see something like that, a kind of a decaying exponential. Now that's that's kind of a poor decaying exponential. We'd have something along those lines. So the thing is, if you look here, this. Uh, expression here, G2 over G1, N1 minus N2, is it kind of relates to the population. So N1 and N2 are the population densities in each of the levels. So we can see that unless um, unless this this the, it, well excuse me, if we leave this particular expression as it is, then alpha or negative alpha is always going to be a negative um, a negative number. So we're always going to have a decaying exponential. So the the basically the attenuation or the um, the, the intensity of your beam is just going to decay to nothing. However, if somehow you can get this negative alpha to be a positive number, then you're going to have exponential growth and you're going to have gain. All right. So by putting, you're going to have gain in your laser, and that of course is something which we want. We want our laser to be able to be ga gaining. So if you look at the expression for alpha of nu, we can, we can see the following. We can see that if n2 is greater than n1 times g2 over g1, the alpha would be a negative number, so a negative alpha times a negative number is going to be a positive number, and you're going to get growth. Alright? So, um, yeah, okay, so just bear with me, we'll keep that in mind for the moment. So let's say that if we somehow get this particular, we get this, uh, we, we get n2 to be greater than g2 over g1 times n1, then what we'll have is the following. We won't have alpha more. This would be a, a kind of a loss coefficient. So if we can invert the population, so we're saying this time the population in level two, the higher energy level, is greater than, let's we'll say, the population in energy level one times the, uh, the 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 degeneracies. So let's say if we turn that around, we're going to get a gain coefficient. I'm going to call this a gain coefficient. It's a function of nu. It's going to be the following. It's going to be if I just um, rearrange it, I suppose, you're going to get that it's going to be 8 to 1 c squared over 8 pi h nu squared mu squared times n2 minus g2 over g1 n1 times g of nu. Alright, so that's that's our gain coefficient. And like I said, this is when we get a population inversion. So somehow we pump the laser or we excite it to such a way that there are more electrons in the higher levels than there are in the lower levels. So we get a population inversion. So what if we talk, if, we, if I kind of remove this and I say, we're going to no longer talk about alpha. What, if, what are the other types of losses you might have in your laser cavity? 
Well, you could have diffraction losses. You could have energy levels which you don't want to, to use getting excited. And you're, you're losing energy all the time. So what if I say I'm going to call gamma kind of a loss coefficient. And this is, this is just a general loss coefficient, I-C-I-E-N-T, loss coefficient. And we're going to say that it happens per meter. Now, this isn't the case. Of course, these things can happen at specific, or losses happen at specific points in different ways. But we'll approximate all the losses together as having a kind of an effect per meter. All right, so our gain um, is, is, we'll say, K, and our loss is gamma. Okay, and I'll tell you that uh, when you have a threshold, okay, so when you have a threshold of, um, uh, that, that's when your, we'll say your laser has reached a, a net gain, we'll say you're going to have your gain is equal to your, your loss, or you're going to say that K is equal to gamma. Alright, and that's the kind of, that is the situation you're looking for in your lasers. You want K, your gain, equal to your losses, or you want your losses equal to your gains. And like I said, what you have as a result of that is if k is equal to gamma, you're going to have that n2 minus g2 over g1 times n1. And that is going to be equal to, and I suppose I'm really running out of room, but I'll try. So we're going to have 8 pi h nu squared, or nu squared mu squared over a21 times c squared gamma g of nu. Like that, and that'll be that'll be your 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 condition for threshold. So that's your threshold gain value. And the point to notice here is that a21 is something which we, with which we can measure, because in a previous video I showed you that the a21, which is the spontaneous transition, is uh, a21 is equal to one over your uh, your lifetime. And because we're able to measure lifetimes, we're able to measure a21. So that's why we don't leave it at B21, which we could do if we wanted. And what else is measurable? There's something else measurable there. Oh yes, your probability or, or your line shape function here, G nu, is measurable as well. Because that's equal to 1 over your, your full width at half maximum, which is delta nu. So the, we're able to basically measure all these little uh, parameters here. And as a result, we'll measure our gain coefficient for threshold. So I suppose really what I'm getting at you, get, trying to get uh, across to you, excuse me, is that in order to get a gain, you need you to get a population inversion. And a population inversion can be seen mathematically here as to when the, we'll say, the population density in, in level 2 is greater than this, uh, this expression here. And you do that by pumping. And if you do that, you're going to get a gain in your laser, which is obviously what you want. So I think that's all I've got to say about that. Yes, it is. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.